For this video, we're going to see how to use Power Query to find the largest or smallest item by group. I have four different iterations that we're going to go through. The first will be just to find the best or worst sale by each group, leaving us with the group name and the best and worst sale. But then we'll expand that to find the best transaction or the worst transaction by group. This is where we retain the entire record, the entire transaction, not just the sale value. We'll then expand that to finding the best and worst transaction by group, but also account for ties. So where the prior example will only return the first encountered best or worst, this third version will retain all ties if they exist. And then finally, we'll introduce a bit of parameterization by allowing the user to decide how many of the best or worst transactions they want to retain by group. Be sure to download these files from the link in the video description so you can follow along with me and have access to all of the M code with full documentation. We begin by examining the data. I have a proper table of sales transactions that has the date, product, quantity sold, unit price, and then sale amount. And there are a thousand transactions in this table. As I said, it is a proper table. And if I go up to table design, I can see the name of this table is sales. In our report, we want to show one of each product, and then for that particular product, the best sale and worst sale of that product. We don't care about the date or the quantity or the unit price. We just want the product and the best and worst sale. So let's begin by going up to data and then from table range. Bringing this data into Power Query, the first thing we'll do is just refine our data types. I don't need date time information, so I'll set that to date. And I don't need the unit price and sale amount to have 15 decimal place precision in the fraction, so I'll change that data type from decimal number to currency. You don't have to make these changes, it's just I like to do it. Now the easiest way to find the best and worst sale by product is to use the group by feature. We'll select the product field, and on the home ribbon we'll go to group by, and we're going to group by product. The first thing I want to do is find the best sale. So we'll title that column best sale, and I'll change the operation to a max function. And that max function will be exercised on the sale amount column. I'd also like to find the worst sale, but since the basic interface for group by only allows for a single new column, we'll have to switch to advanced so we can add an aggregation. And we'll call this worst sale. This will utilize a min function, also on the sale amount field. Click OK. There's our report. I'm going to set the data type for both of these to currency. I'll rename my query to best worst, and we'll click close and load and send this back to Excel. And there we have our best and worst sale for each product. Now, if you'd like, you could also sort this by product name alphabetically or ascending, descending by best sale or worst sale. But what if we want to return the entire record of the best sale or the entire record of the worst sale? Starting over with our data set, we'll go up to data, from table range and bring this into Power Query. I'll refine my data types. And now we'd like to group by product and find the best sale, but we want to return the entire record for that best sale so we know what day, the quantity, the unit price, and the sale amount. So for this, we're going to go up and add a step by clicking the FX button. And in the formula bar, we're going to use a table.group function. The table will be the table from the previous step called change type, comma, the column we're grouping by is the product column. Now you have to put the name of the column in double quotes, but because it's possible you can group by multiple columns, those column names must be provided as a list. And in Power Query, all lists are enclosed in curly braces. So even though it's only one column, we still have to put it in the curly braces. Comma, now the aggregations. We're not actually going to return the entire record at first, we're going to return a record object that has that record contained within it, and then we'll expand it. Now, since aggregations are lists and you can have multiple aggregations, those multiple aggregations have to be in a list. So we're going to have to do a double list, even if it's just a single aggregation. So the column that we're going to create that's going to hold this record, in double quotes, we're going to call it best record, comma, and what we want to do is we want to iterate through each row of this table. So we'll put in the keyword each, and we just want to find the first record in a list. So in each of these products, we need to sort the product in either ascending or descending order, and then just return the first item in that sorted list. So we'll use a table sort function to sort each of these product lists, open parentheses, 
We're going to use an underscore to represent this list, comma, and now we need to provide a list of columns to sort and their sort direction. And as we know, all lists go in curly braces. The column we're sorting by from the original table in double quotes is sale amount. And the sort function is going to sort that in descending order from largest to smallest. That way we can pick the first one in the list, which is the largest. So we'll use an order descending. Let's put a closing parentheses on this for the group. And if that's all we do, we'll hit enter. We will get a list of each product's table in sorted order. So the largest value is at the top. By the way, notice there are many ties in these, so we're only going to return the first encountered largest sale. We'll, we'll tackle that whole ties issue in just a moment. But I want to return just the first record from each of these tables. So instead of a list of nested tables, I want a list of nested records. So we'll go back into our formula, and after the each keyword, we're going to wrap each of these tables inside of a table first function. We need to go towards the end of the formula and add a close parentheses for our table.first function. We'll give it a check. And now we've replaced the list of nested tables with nested records. And if we peek inside of one of those records, we'll see the first encountered record from each of the sorted tables. Now we just need to extract the records. So we'll hit the expand record button. We don't need the product because we already have that, but we would like the date, the quantity, the unit price, and the sale amount. We'll hit OK. And now we have the largest sale for each product with the complete record information. And as I said before, we could sort this by product, by date, by sale amount, whatever you want. With these new columns selected, we'll go up to transform, detect the data types, and I would actually refine the unit price and sale amount as currency. Let's go up to home and close and load this back out into Excel. And here's our output. I forgot to rename this query, so I'll right click and rename this to best record. Suppose we wanted the opposite of this, we wanted the lowest sale amount for each product. Most of this is exactly the same, so we can go to this query and right click duplicate. The source step is good, the initial data type setting is good, the custom function however, let's expand our formula bar, will just change the sort direction from, from descending to ascending. So this will sort each product in ascending order, lowest to highest, and will still pull the first record from each of those tables. I'll hit check, we'll expand the records, and then set our data types. And so this is the lowest sale of each product. We'll rename this to worst record, and let's load this back out into Excel. And there's our output. As we saw earlier, there were ties for the best or worst sale for each product, but we only returned the first encountered best or worst sale. Let's now create a query where we can bring back the best and worst sale for each product and account for ties. So with our sales data, we'll go up to from table range, we'll refine our data types, and we're going to write this formula by hand. So we'll go up to our add step button, give it a click. I'll go ahead and expand the formula bar out because this might get a little lengthy. As before, we'll start with a table.group function. The table we're going to feed the group function comes from the prior step change type, comma. The column we're going to be grouping by, supplied as a list, is the product column, comma. We're going to end up with a list inside of a list situation, so we'll have two curly braces. The new aggregated column that we're going to create will be called best sales, comma. Now for the aggregation, we're going to look through each row of this table, but we're going to create essentially a query within a query. Now most queries begin with a let statement, and that's what we're going to do here. But what we want to do is find the largest value in each of these groups, and then store that in a variable called max sales. So max sales is going to be equal to the output of a list max function. And that list max function is going to look through the sale amount column. Now in this case, we need to place the sale amount name within a set of square brackets. After our close parentheses for the list out max function, we'll then type in, and that max sale analysis is going to be sent to a table select rows function the table we'll look at will be the current product table from the group by function, and we can represent that with an underscore. And we will examine each row within that table, scanning the sale amount column, and seeing if it's equal to the max sales variable that we captured just a moment ago. After the table.selectRows function, comma, we will then set the data type for this as a type table. We have our two closed parentheses for our nested lists, and then a final closed parentheses for the table.group function. 
We hit enter. And even if there was only one record returned, it still comes back as a full table. So peeking into Tangerine, here are all of the ties for the highest sales. Same thing for tomato, cucumber, grapefruit, etc. And if I pull this up a bit, we can see in the case of grapes, there were seven ties. But in the case of grapefruit, there were eight. And tangerine, there were 12. We now need to expand these tables so we can see the records before we send them back to Excel. So we'll hit expand table. We'll pick every column except product, which is information we already have. Hit OK. And then while we have the columns selected, we'll go to transform and detect the data types. And I'm going to refine my unit price and sale amount to currency. We'll rename our query to best sales, and then go to home and close and load this back out to Excel. And now we have our best sales for each product, accounting for ties. Now, if we want the worst sale for each product and account for ties, the query is almost exactly the same, so we can cheat a little here. We'll go to the best sales query, we'll right click duplicate, the source step is good, bringing in the data, set our initial data types, but now when we go to custom, let's expand our formula bar. What we'll do is we will change this from a list.max function to a list.min function. Now that variable that we set up called max sales, we'll call that min sales, and we'll also have to change that in the final step. But other than that, everything's great. We'll hit check. Now if we peek into the tables, here are all the ties for the worst sale of tangerines, tomatoes, cucumbers, grapefruit, etc. We'll rename our query and then close and load this back into Excel. And now we see the worst sales for each product accounting for ties. For our final rendition, let's give the user the option to decide how many of the best or worst items they want to return from each product. Maybe I want the five best sales or the five worst sales or the hundred best or the hundred worst. Now, full disclosure, this particular solution does not account for ties. That would get a bit more involved, and it's likely to be the subject of another video. So in this case, we're assuming there either are no ties, or we just want the first encountered best or worst. So I've created a cell here for the user to type in their value. And notice in the name box, I've named this cell best worst. Because what we're going to do is we're going to bring this one cell in as a query and that will serve as a parameter to feed the next query, which will produce our tables. I'll just type in a three for now. We'll go up to data from table range, and because this is a named range, it's called best worst, we'll bring in this named range cell. I don't care about the data typing, so I'm going to delete that step. So notice in our M code from the current workbook, we've brought in the named range called best worst, and that's coming from the content column. To extract this number and use it as a parameter, we'll right click on this column heading and choose drill down. Now that brings back the entire column. Even though there's only one row, it's still an entire column, which is a list. But I want the first encountered value of that list. So I'll go in the M code and the square brackets represent the up and down portion of the data. Curly braces would represent the side to side. So in other words, square brackets are columns, curly braces are rows. And I want the first row in that list. And since Power Query starts counting at zero, I'll type in a zero. And now we have extracted just the three. I don't want to send this back out into Excel. So we'll go up to home, hit the lower part of close and load and say close and load two. And we'll set this up as a connection only query. So that scalar value is going to serve as our parameter. Now let's click in our blue table. We'll go to table range. We'll refine our data types. I'll rename the query to best end sales. And now we'll go to our formula bar, click add step. I'll expand the formula bar. As before, we're going to use a table.group function. The table that table.group will be iterating through is coming from the previous step called change type, comma. The column we want to group by, that's provided as a list. And in double quotes, as before, product, comma. The aggregated columns, this will be a list of lists, so double curly braces. The output column of nested tables, we'll name that best records, comma, and we'll iterate through each row of the table provided by the previous step. And as before, we would create a sorted table in descending order based off the sale amount column. But earlier, where we wanted to pull just the first encountered row of that sorted table, this one we want to pull a set number of rows from the top of that table 
based on the user's supply parameter from that best worst cell. So we'll use a table first n function, where table.first just pulled the first row. First n says, give me a table, comma, and then a value. Well, that's going to be the scalar value from the best worst parameter. So we'll close parentheses for the table.first n. And I just realized I forgot to supply the table.sort function a list of columns to sort by. So I need to go in here and add the curly braces for the sale amount order.descending operation. Make sure we have two closing curly braces for our lists of lists. We'll hit check. And now peeking into tangerine, we've returned the three top sales of tangerine. Same thing for tomato, cucumber, etc. Now in my data, there were a lot of ties in those top positions, but we're pulling the top three ties. If you didn't have any ties, then you just pull the top three values. We need to expand these tables. So I'll pull all the columns except for product, hit OK, go up to transform, detect our data types, and I'll refine my price and amount. Let's go up to home, send this back to Excel, and here we have the top three sales for each product. Now to test this, let's go back to our data. I'll change best worst to one, go back to our Power Query output, right-click refresh, and there's the top one sale for each product. If I go back to my argument, change it to five, back to our output, right-click refresh. We now see the top five for tangerine, the top five for tomato, the top five for cucumber, etc. If you would like the opposite approach, the worst five sales for each product, the code is almost exactly the same, so we can take our current best end sales query, right-click duplicate, we'll rename this to worst end sales. The source step is good, bringing in the data, set our initial data types, but in the custom function, let's expand out our formula bar, the only thing we have to do is change this from a descending sort to an ascending sort. So when that table is flipped by sort, the table.firstn functions the exact same way, utilizing the parameter supplied by the best worst scalar value. Let's close and load this back to Excel. Looking back at our data, our parameter was set to five. Now for the worst sale, here's the five worst sales of tangerines, the five worst sale of tomato, the five worst sale of cucumber. If we go back to sales, change that best worst to two, back to our output, right click refresh, and now we have the two worst sales for each product. So there you have it, the best worst sale by product, the best and worst transactions by product, the best and worst transactions by product with ties, and the best N or worst N transactions based on user input. Remember to download this file from the link in the video description so you can have all of these queries and each query's M code is fully documented. So as always, let me know what you think about this in the comments. And if you have any twists on how I've approached this, please put that in the comments as well because I'm always looking to improve this. Thank you for watching, and remember at BCTI, the learning never stops.